You've got questions about money. Well, we have the man to answer those questions. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode of Ask the Hammer. Good to be with you today, sir. Oh, good to be with you. Uh, I've got a question from a young couple. It goes like this. My wife and I are in our late 20s and want to buy a house. I'm told that uh, the average down payment on a house these days is about 7% for first-time home buyers. Is that how much we should plan on saving, or should we aim to put down an even greater percent so as to bring down the monthly mortgage payment? This is a really good question, Bob. And as so many of the questions that come our way, the answer, of course, is it depends. Uh, and it depends on a variety of factors. For instance, uh, what else might you be doing with those dollars? Are you delaying moving into the home of your dreams because you're trying to accumulate the larger down payment? There are a lot of reasons why you may want a larger down payment. Not only might it reduce your monthly payments, but more important than that, it might help you reduce the interest rate that you have to pay. Obviously, if you have more equity in the home, the bank has a little bit less risk in there, and so they may be willing to give you a lower interest rate. Uh, in fact, certain loans are only available if you put down, let's say, 10% or 20%. You may not, not all lenders will go to smaller uh, smaller deposit amounts. So you open up more lenders as you are willing to put down higher down payments, and that might help you to not only reduce your total cost, but also, and more importantly, potentially, reduce your interest rate. Now, along those lines, how much should you put down? Well, the higher your interest rate, the better off you are putting down a larger amount. When interest rates are relatively low, putting down a smaller down payment isn't as big of a deal because you're using your own money longer and you can probably beat that interest rate on your own. But as interest rates rise, it becomes harder and harder to do that over the long run. And so putting more money down can be effective. But at the end of the day, Bob, a home is where you live. It's where you're going to spend your time with your family, with your loved ones. And so the most important thing here is, can you afford the home that you want? Don't look at your home as an investment. You know, notoriously, uh, homes can be not the best financial decision, right? A lot of times people will be better off financially just renting, not all the time, but a lot of the time. But your home, as they say, is your castle, right? And if that's important to you, there are a lot of things in this world more important than money. If you're lucky enough to be able to afford the home that you want and you can make the memories there with the family that you have, it can trump the financial considerations. Yeah. So one quick follow-up, should um, folks who are in this situation target 33% of their income toward housing expenses, principal interest, insurance, taxes? Yeah, there are a couple of different uh, metrics you can use. There's what's called the front-end ratio and the back-end ratio. The front-end looks at what you look at typically as your pity payments, right? Your principal, your interest, your taxes, your insurance. Uh, and then the back-end also looking at other types of debt. How much collective debt do you have? I think those are important metrics and there are various rules of thumb that lenders have, uh, but that's just the lender's rule of thumb. You need to be cognizant of your own lifestyle needs. For instance, maybe it's not debt, but you just live a more expensive lifestyle. You have children who need daycare. Well, that doesn't show up in debt, but it removes income from your monthly cash flow. Uh, you may have a uh, higher car, uh, well, I guess that would show up on debt, but there you may eat nicer. You may live in a more expensive city. Like all of these things can increase the monthly cost of living without necessarily increasing your debt. So while existing debt can be an important factor uh, that would go into, let's say, the back end calculation, it really doesn't tell the whole story. At the end of the day, it's putting your own expenses on paper, comparing them to your income, and saying, how much? can I safely spend? And whatever you think it's going to cost you to actually run the house, <laughs> double it. Because <laughs> it's, it's your air conditioning bill will be more than you thought. Your water bill will be more than you thought. Your electric bill, everything tends to be more expensive uh, over time. And of course, today, Bob, uh, we don't have nearly the low interest rates that we did just a few years ago. So that's something we have to take into consideration too. How long will these last? And will individuals who buy today have an opportunity to refinance at lower rates anytime in the near future? Some say yes, some say no. I say, I don't know. Mm. Well, I what I know is this, as the uh, father of triplets, 
uh, whose friends always came to our house rather than them going to other people's houses, our food bill was not just triple, but I don't know, <laughs> quadrupled uh, something or other. It was large. So anyway, I I I, I want to hear other people's story and other people's questions around whether they're a first time home buyer or uh, or not. That's right. We'd love to have your questions come in on the front end so that on the back end, we can return them to you with an answer. So if you've got a question for us, give us a shout. Email us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to tackling your questions real soon. Mm -hmm.